Today, we're going to take a quick look at The Nice Guys, directed by Shane Black and starring Russell Crowe, Ryan Gosling, and, and Gary Rice. And I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, but if you've been around this show a while, you know how I am with pronouncing people's names. So the last time I did a vlog, I talked about an advanced screening of Angry Birds that I attended, and I was very glad I did not have to pay money to see it. This time around, I did have to pay money to see The Nice Guys, but I have no regrets about that because this was awesome. So this movie is about these two private investigators in the 1970s. One is played by Ryan Gosling, and he is possibly the world's worst private investigator. At least, that's what his daughter will tell you. And he's an alcoholic, a chain smoker, and basically your general fuck-up. And then you have Russell Crowe, who technically isn't a PI because he's not good enough to get his PI license. Probably because he has a tendency to hurt people, which, to be fair, he is quite good at. And through a wacky turn of events, these two end up joining forces to investigate the recent death of a well-known porn star. And this ends up turning into a hunt for another actress who has gone missing, which then leads them to the home of a porn director, and somehow involves the head of the Justice Department, and the automotive industry. And then it gets weird. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one. The dialogue is so well written. Pretty much what you would expect from Shane Black. I love how these characters interact with each other. Gosling and Crow. I cannot believe these two have never worked together before. At least I don't think they have, because they play off each other so well. And the girl who plays Ryan Gosling's daughter and Gary Rice was also fantastic. And as soon as this character was introduced, my first thought was, oh great, we got another one of these stupid ass child sidekicks that's just gonna get in everyone's way and screw everything up in the name of comedy. Oh no, I could not have been more wrong. She was amazing. If anything, she's the competent one in this movie, covering up for her dad's mistakes. She even has to drive him around sometimes because he's a raging alcoholic and is often too drunk to drive. Oh, did I mention she's 13? I guess someone who's underage but sober is technically better than a drunk adult behind the wheel. What are you gonna do? And the friendship that develops between her and Russell Crowe in this movie is one of those things that really shouldn't work, but somehow it does. It actually ends up being oddly charming. And she's apparently Australian, which surprised me when I looked that up on IMDb later, because she has a flawless American accent in this movie. I like Keith David's small part in this movie as this badass hitman. He was pretty good. And there was one other person in this movie who was really good, but I don't want to mention this person's name because I don't think... This person was advertised at all, kind of like Matt Damon in Interstellar. I think it was meant to be a surprise, so I'm not going to mention the name, but really good. It was someone I hadn't seen in a good long while. Nice to see this person still doing well. The action sequences are pretty well done. The comedy is fantastic, both with the dialogue and also the physical comedy. It's all very well done. It does get kind of dark at times, especially since a lot of the physical comedy involves people either getting hurt or killed. Especially that elevator scene that, I'm not going to say anything about it, I'm just going to say the elevator scene was so good. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And one scene that I really enjoyed, and I guess this is a minor spoiler, but even if I tell you what happens in this scene, you're not going to get the full effect unless you actually see the movie. So I don't think I'm really ruining anything for you here, but there's a scene where... Uh, Gosling and Crow are at this party that they're investigating the disappearance of this actress, and Gosling gets completely shit-faced after, I think, three drinks, because he's a total lush, and ends up falling ass over tea kettle off this second-story balcony to the ground below, and then rolls down this hill, and... After that, he just kind of props himself up against a tree and figures, well... Really has been one of those days. Might as well have a smoke. So he lights up a cigarette, and the flame from his lighter lets him know that there's this dead guy sitting right next to him. And at this moment, he tries to call to Russell Crowe for help, but he just fell down a hill after falling off a balcony, and he's shit-faced, and he's scared out of his mind because he just realized he's sitting next to a dead guy, and I guess the combination of all these things somehow caused his brain to temporarily forget how human speech works. So 
he just makes these weird half whispered noises. I'm not even going to try to duplicate it because there's no way I can do it justice. But oh my God, it was so funny. It's almost like he was channeling the spirit of Lou Costello in a way. Just so good. If you have not already seen this movie, I highly recommend it. It is easily worth full price. And I hope this is not the last time we see these two working together. I want Nice Guys 2. And I think there's a chance we might get it. The end of the movie does kind of leave that door open. So let's hope that happens. We need Nice Guys 2. Please, Shane Black, make it happen. And that's all I got to say about Nice Guys. And next time I see you, I will probably be talking about X-Men Apocalypse. For better or worse, we'll see how that turns out. So till then, take care.